Hi, so today we are joined by Andrew Malt, the co-founder and country manager of Hammerjack here in Manila, Philippines. Okay, hi Andrew, how are you? Good, thank you. And uh, so if you can um, just introduce yourself briefly and uh, Hammerjack. So my name is Andrew Malt. I'm the country manager and a director at Hammerjack. Uh, Hammerjack provides a whole of business um, outsourced solutions specialized in the small and uh, medium business space. And so where does Hammerjack fit into the outsourcing market and what are the, the value propositions specifically for, for Hammerjack? Where, where we fit, as I mentioned, is really in the, in the small and medium business space is what we're servicing and where our focus is. We provide uh, a series of outsourced solutions which are built around problems that our uh, customers have in their businesses. So some businesses are more advanced than others um, and have experience, know what they want. Uh, others are just dipping their toe and, and want to get a feel for outsourcing. So our service models, I guess, are able to adapt uh, to their needs. Uh, so we can keep it simple, if need be, a uh, straightforward kind of staffing solution, or we can really get into the detail and, and help them you know, remove a, a process or a problem out of their business and, uh, or, or establish new capability for their business. And going right back to the beginning then, if uh, you know, there's, a, there's a guy with a viable, successful business, um, why should they outsource? What is outsourcing and, and why is there any advantage to it? You know, outsourcing... Uh, it's been around for a long time. So what does outsourcing do? It, it allows you to tap uh, a set of skills or capability or experience that you don't have in your business. Most of the businesses that we're dealing with, uh, you know, are focusing on cost and cost reduction, you know, and, and cash flow, uh, which is a very viable reason to be looking at outsourcing. Uh, me and Hammerjack, where we see the real value in outsourcing, is around introducing um, a new skill set or capability uh, into your business that perhaps you don't have today. A lot of businesses are looking at outsourcing and offshoring primarily with cost reduction or you know, uh, addressing cash flow issues that they have. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of businesses are, are just dipping their toe. Uh, but where we really see the value and what Hammerjack you know, uh, intends to bring to the market and to our customers is to see the actual uh, capability and skills that are available that don't exist in your business today um, and that maybe are not available uh, in reach of your business uh, in your local um, area. So we, we really see the fact as, a, as adding value and new capability, not just reducing costs. If someone then is, is looking at taking that first step, mm. dipping their toe into outsourcing, how do you commonly advise them to do that so they're still within their comfort levels and so that they can uh, get, a, get a quick win and, and, and build their confidence? There's an element of, consulta of consultation in, in the way that we uh, present our solutions to our customers. And like any consulting uh, business, we understand the business, understand the problems or challenges, uh, the goals or objectives of where they want to get to. Uh, we talk about budgets, we talk about um, you know, long-term plans. Uh, and it's not about overcomplicating it, it's just understanding where they want to get to because you know, we don't want to... Uh, you know, provide or, or present uh, an, a full end-to-end -end solution when really all they're looking for is an extra head to take care of a process that's within the business. So really understanding where, what they're trying to achieve, what are their goals, and, uh, and presenting the best solution for them, uh, whether that's staffing, fully managed uh, kind of solution, or even just a pointed solution which addresses uh, you know, a headache or a challenge that they have in their business today. So outsourcing has many different varieties, colours, uh, structures. Um, can you briefly explain the difference between kind of basic seat leasing versus fully managed services and, and where you fit into with that? You know, there are, there are a couple of different models. Um, so staffing or seat leasing or outsourced staffing uh, or dedicated resources is one model um, which, you know, really... Uh, provides skilled and capable resources based on a, a functional role that you have in your business uh, and you're looking to fill. Um, so under those models, you know, you, you work closely with the service provider to outline what those skills are. You're involved, um, you know, uh, very much in the recruitment and placing process and you're supported, you know, day to day from a, from a, um, a HR and IT management uh, support level, but 
from a day-to-day -day management and direction of the employee that's really conducted by you as the business owner. Uh, and that really suits businesses that, you know, they're looking to add heads, uh, they've got a, a key function or a specific function that they're looking to uh, move from their business, or it could even be, um, you know, a set of smaller tasks like an administrative type function. So that's kind of staffing. A fully managed uh, or outsourced model is, uh, you know, it, it's still, it's about understanding the skills, the function that you're looking to have um, performed, but it's probably more taking a few steps back and understanding, again, where are you trying to get to? What does good look like to you and your business? Um, how are you doing the process or function in your business today? And when you engage a, a, an outsource provider to provide a, a, a managed end-to-end -end type service, the, the, uh, the expectation is that they are, they're going to do it at a lower cost, uh, they're going to take full ownership, and they're responsible for the output. Um, and the relationship there is very much built around you know, performance-based type pricing, um, if that makes sense. So it's more outcome-based. Uh, but really, you're engaging a specialist who, uh, who, who probably knows how to perform that function better than you do. Uh, that's really how the managed model works. Other models out there are, are, are very focused and specific around key um, skills and capability that could be you know, collections or it could be uh, bookkeeping or, or, or customer service. And these are, you know, type of uh, uh, pointed solutions that, that really just address an immediate need within a business um, and can be tapped maybe more on a subscription type uh, arrangement. For people, now they're taking the first step into outsourcing, uh, what are some low hanging fruit? What are some common roles that, you know, can confidently be executed very well? Um, and really get some uh, quick wins on the board for uh, would-be uh, outsourcing people. Yeah. I guess for businesses that are looking uh, to dip their toe um, and trying to see what, what can they really, how can they leverage uh, outsourcing to uh, improve cash flow or improve functions within the business, uh, you know, common roles uh, that we see a lot of are, you know, in, in finance and accounting. So, you know, end-to-end uh, -end bookkeeping, as an internal finance um, role. Bookkeepers working as part of a bookkeeping company or an accounting firm. Uh, tax and compliance uh, work as part of an accounting firm. So really, you know, uh, accounting firms that are looking at, uh, you know, to move towards more advisory and value-add services, they, you know, by outsourcing your, your bookkeeping on, and taxation, you know, you're, you're removing that um, repetitive, although complex work from your, uh, um, you know, I guess skilled and high-priced uh, resources in Australia, allowing them to focus on more value add for the business. Other other roles are ad administration roles, um, social media marketing. We see as a really big one. Uh, the skills over here actually, there there are plenty of really smart and uh, and qualified people that that just that just are able to they've they've grown up with this technology and these platforms you know they're a younger generation if you like and they're able to really they get your business they understand how it's done and you know and um and can really make a difference and, and help you launch your whole social media or digital um personality i guess um so there are, i guess a couple of the roles that you could really look at as a guide how does the pricing work with outsourcing is it a is it a package cost is it a a, a split out cost uh, yeah probably better to split this into the, the different service models that we provide. So under the staffing model, um, fairly straightforward, uh, the uh, resource cost is billed at cost. So um, you'll hear the term fully loaded cost, which just means everything that's wrapped up into the cost of, of employing somebody. Uh, it's very transparent. Uh, we provide the details of what that includes, which is things like health insurance, life insurance, you know, government mandated uh, contributions. Um, then really it's our service fee. The service fee you know, um, really just includes uh, the hardware and software, the tools they need to do the job. Uh, obviously the facilities and access to you know, video conferencing, meeting rooms, training rooms. Uh, it's processes you know, like uh, arranging for visas for travel if need be. And it's supporting you know, uh, management of performance um, and you know, recruiting of resources at a, you know, at a at an administration type level. So that's under the staffing model. Um, our fully managed model, uh, it's a little bit trickier. It's built around uh, the output and the outcome that you're looking to achieve. So, you know, pricing's 
built around the skill set. You know, still we base the skill, the, the cost around the actual cost of the resource or the skill required. But there's a little bit more that goes into the delivery of that service. Um, so that pricing is very much built around an hourly price. It's built, it's tied back to a set of uh, KPIs and deliverables. So it's a performance pricing model. Uh, so X number of transactions equals this much per month or this much per hour. Essentially, that's how that works, probably the simplest way. Um, the third and final uh, offering that we provide is a, a set of pointed solutions. Uh, so services like collections, uh, bookkeeping, uh, live chat, social media marketing. Uh, and this is a, a subscription model built around a set of uh, defined uh, you know, um, functions and, and, uh, and output. Uh, and price based on you know a monthly basis. So these these uh, models are very much plug and play. You know they're up and running in kind of you know three to five days. And you know you can use the, you know collection service for a month and then switch it off, so on and so forth. So it's a lot more flexibility. The pricing is very transparent, but it's built around uh, um, you know a fixed monthly cost based on an agreed set of outcomes. So what specific specialized verticals is Hammerjack in and has core strengths? Eh? Yeah, so we, we specialised in four key areas, um, and there's a number of different functions and, and, and uh, activities that we perform under each of those verticals. But at, but at a high level, um, we do a lot of work in the finance and accounting space. So um, working with bookkeepers, working with accounting firms, uh, working with small and mid-sized businesses to, to outsource uh, their, their um, uh, finance function and payroll and so on. We, uh, we offer customer services and support um, uh, functions um, and you know as an example working with uh, technology companies to uh, to develop uh, customer service functions to support their product or onboard a product and th that includes things like live chat um, you know uh, email support and so on and so forth sales and marketing uh, we work with businesses to help establish or develop a you know a telemarketing campaign um, or uh, you know um, any, any kind of outbound uh, calling or voice activity, which also includes you know, live chat uh, under the lead generation type activity that we do. And then really back office and administration. Um, so working with companies there to, to take away those, um, you know, those, those labor intensive uh, functions that are generally kind of larger volume and, and repetitive in their nature, uh, but have a high t you know, reliance on quality uh, and timeliness. So you know, we're able to offer uh, you know, back office functions like order provisioning, but we can do it overnight, which is allowing businesses to be a lot more fluid uh, and, you know, um, and, and move forward, forward with their business day to day, knowing that those administrative functions are removed from their business. A lot of people question why Philippines and, and um, what is the quality available in the Philippines. Now, you can, you're a part of a bigger group of companies and, yep. and uh, demonstrate incredible innovation within this group. So can you tell us a little bit about that? So I guess starting with the, the group. So Hammerjack is one of uh, around 18 companies um, uh, under the Future Now Ventures uh, umbrella, which is a, you know, a venture capitalist company. So really what that does, it allows us to tap a broader range of capabilities and skills. We're, we're fortunate to be working with a, with a group as Future Now and other companies that have got a lot of experience in getting results and being successful here in the Philippines, both on a large scale and in a small and startup um, uh, space. Uh, a lot of the businesses as part of our group are working in the technology space. So again, when people talk about the capability and what you can really uh, achieve here in the Philippines, and as I mentioned earlier, it's really about the skills and the capability that's here. So, you know, one of our, uh, you know, as part of our, our group, we've got, you know, access to more than 150 developers as an example. What that allows us to do is really um, offer a broader range of services and specialise without trying to be a jack of all trades. We can actually specialise and help customers with a greater breadth of, of, of capability. When, when we talk about the Philippines and what the Philippines brings, um, yes, lower cost resources, but that's really was never a driver for us. It's not a driver for our, our businesses. It's about uh, the, the, the skills and the capability that are available here, the willingness to work, the culture, this, you know, a very driven, enthusiastic, uh, results-driven uh, culture, uh, which is a pleasure to be a part of. And, I, and I'm obviously here based in the Philippines, so I get to experience it every day. But to be frank, you don't get, especially across some of the functions that we perform, you, I haven't found that 
in Australia or in the UK. Not to say it doesn't exist, but I, I, I just think um, you can achieve a lot here, but it takes a different approach. It's understanding the market. If someone is uh, wanting more information and they want to do, a, they want to search the market, or they maybe want to start, how do you suggest people uh, go about exploring outsourcing because it's such a uh, potentially a foreign concept and they're in different countries? How do you, how do you yeah. suggest people engage? You know, probably to start by understanding uh, what it is you're trying to achieve, what are your core objectives, um, you know, what does your timeline look like. You know, then, then do some research, uh, start to engage service providers. There are, there are plenty of good uh, providers out there, lots of good resources um, to, to read up on. And ultimately, you know, you, you, you're probably going to, you know, um, go with a service provider that provides a service model that works to get your end goal or a provider that really understands your business and where you're looking to get to. So that, that's pretty much it. I think keep it simple. Um, uh, understand where you want to get to, do your research and find a partner that you can work with. So a lot of small and medium-sized businesses, they might fear that uh, outsourcing is an enterprise solution and it costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, it's more available now than ever yep. uh, to small and medium-sized enterprise. Can you, can you speak to that? The advantage that small and medium businesses have is that people want their business. Uh, the market has become more competitive, so we've been able to leverage the capability and the experience of the enterprise outsourcing space uh, and really p p build that into smaller pieces and chunks that are more palatable for a small business um, and, and you know, at, a, at a price point that allows them to make that, that move without you know, breaking the bank or taking too much risk. So you, know, um, you, can, you can get a full-time resource for, you know, for a thousand bucks a month um, on a monthly basis. You can get subscription models where you pay by outcomes. So you know, those models are really easy to understand. If, if, you know, if you figure out that X number of transactions is worth this to you as a business um, and, and you pay, you know, let's say, uh, 500 bucks a month to that output, it's really easy to understand. Um, and, and again, you know, a lot more palatable for, for a business to make the move. Um, with our service models for our staffing model and for our, our pointed solutions, there are no you know, long-term service contracts. So you know, if, if it's not working, you can, you can call it a day. Um, you know, the idea, the emphasis is on, on, on businesses to perform. But yeah, the industry has become a lot more flexible. It's a lower price point, price point to get into the industry. Um, and uh, you know, it's not putting everything on the table and putting your house uh, on the market uh, and taking a gamble, you can actually try outsourcing um, and, and see if it really will work for your business. Uh, and by, you know, by that type of approach, it allows you then to really know what a long-term investment might look like if that's what you're going to go to. There's a lot of new entrants into the market. Uh, how, do we, how do we know uh, people have more experience and, and what experience do you have in the market? Yes. Yeah, so, um, I mentioned the group, and, and our, our group of companies, uh, uh, myself and some of my team, uh, you know, we've been working in the Philippines for around 15 years. Uh, we've worked with uh, some of the largest brands in the world and helping them to outsource and establish you know, high-performing capability here in the Philippines. So uh, experience is everything. It definitely matters. It's not just a case of providing a staff member or, 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 or a warm body on a seat. It's understanding you know, uh, what are the potential challenges? It, there's, there's a bit of education, you know, what can go wrong? Uh, how, how should you communicate? Um, how should you manage performance and targets? So, you know, our, our experience and, and really where we see ourselves is, is being, uh, you know, a, a hub of, of businesses that have, that have been successful here in the Philippines. Um, and, you know, we are opening our doors to any business that's looking to uh, you know, to dip their toe, take the next step, or, or really just to uh, uh, um, have a look at what's possible in the Philippines uh, and inviting them to come and have a look at our business uh, and have a look at what we're doing. We do, uh, outside of the outsourcing space, our companies are, are very uh, in innovative. Um, we're doing a lot with technology. Um, so it's, you know, it's really good to be able to showcase uh, the, fully, the full breadth of capability that we have here.